most people's reaction is better the devil you know than the devil you don't know, meaning better deal with the current reality rather than wanting to change. But I believe that the current world we live in is fundamentally unjust, it's brutal, it excludes the majority of people that live on the planet and we have to change. So the struggle is about ensuring that humanity can coexist with nature for centuries and centuries to come and live in a mutually interdependent relationship with nature. Or put differently, this struggle is fundamentally an inter is a struggle based on intergenerational solidarity and justice. Put differently, it's about securing our children and grandchildren's futures. People's participation has been expanding. So the space is there. I mean, it is you know, a point which Kumi Naidu made was the distinction between access and influence. In my opinion, you cannot influence anything unless you get access. Having got the access, at least half the job is done. In terms of global economic governance, uh, there, there has to be better democracy, which is not existing. To give you an example, the World Bank president is always an American. The IMF managing director is always a European. That has to change. I mean, just because you've got more money in those institutions, it doesn't mean you have the power to appoint. Let the appointments be done on the basis of merit, rather than be done on the basis of the fact that, you know, there's a good, and this is going to be a change uh, which is going to happen, because there are a large number of emerging economies like India, China, etc., which have been pushing for this change. Those of us who do have subsidies to do the meaningful work that we do, we worry that it will diminish. We worry about, uh, about that space. We worry about are we being heard, are we putting our message across. We've put so many reports and so many solutions on the table and, and they don't seem to get picked up. And then you get, you get dispirited. I, what Kumi called that um, consultation fatigue, right? Um, you can go to endless meetings and throw reports on the table and, and plea, um, but people in power don't seem to want to hear. Now then what do you do? Do you give up? Do you lie down and surrender? Or do you keep fighting? We have to look at more at what people have than what people don't have. There is far too much negativity in the way people look at the poor. Because actually the poor don't look at themselves in the same way as those who are not poor look at them. The poor see uh, the possibilities of what they have. I find that organizing people who have less resources, material resources, is not particularly harder than organizing people who have more resources. Because quite often the people who, have, who live overconsumptive lifestyles are defending those overconsumptive lifestyles uh, and, and, and actually wanting the status quo to remain. Uh, what folks who have limited education and power, literacy and access to power and so on. More often than not, what they need is just some basic tools of analysis, knowledge uh, and some technical skills for certain kinds of activities. And I can tell you that injustice and living injustice every day gives you a huge amount of courage to stand up and do the right thing. I call myself a public citizen, uh, that you know, I would like to be uh, a citizen uh, rather than be an individual. <laughs> As somebody said in my country, a famous jurist, that one citizen is equal to a thousand individuals. There are two kinds of social movements. One are by advocacy groups and the other is the campaigning groups. You know, that famous uh, American philosopher Margaret Mead had once said that you don't need a mass movement to make change happen, but even a handful of people can make that change happen. The problem in the world is not that we have too much civil disobedience, but the problem is we have too much of civil obedience where people accept the most outrageous injustices around them, the outrageous acts of corruption by their governments, the outrageous promises that governments make in elections and don't deliver and so on. And given all of this, um, I think the problem we have in the world, I agree, is that many of us have become too obedient to power when in fact we should be disobedient to power being used unjustly.